Boy, that sure is weird music. That hit music even sounds outer spacey, doesn't it? You hear that? That whistling sound? Your The station at the start of time. Broadcasting live from Boise, Idaho, this is Live at the Hive. Thank you and welcome. Uh, we have a live studio audience here. We're broadcasting live from the bench, so welcome you guys, yeah. And welcome to everybody at home and on the interwebs watching, wherever you may be across the globe. We've got a great show for you tonight. Are you ready to go sailing? to Thessalonica and beyond. Yeah. yeah! Please give a warm <laughs> welcome to Cathicon. Duplicitous. Two things. 
Again, we are Catholic. We appreciate everyone who came out here tonight. This next song is called Oathbreaker. I don't care which side of government you're on, I think, or politics, but I think we can all agree that government officials, politicians are all corrupt and they all suck. So we're here to say fuck the state. This is called Oathbreaker. One, two, three, four. I am the Ghost Breaker. 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 I am the
a little bit of a change up from the rest of the set. This song is called Broken Past. We hope you enjoy this song as much as we do.
right, we hope you enjoyed that song. This next song is the first song we ever wrote. We wrote it in May of 2020, and we did not think it would still be relevant. I'm sure we're all tired of coronavirus at this point. This song's called Coronavirus Blues. <laughs> Truth. 
Catholicon, you can find us on all the social medias. This final song is called Judgment Day.
to Live at the Hive. We just finished up with Cathacon. Let's hear it for Cathacon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that was an incredible set. Uh, Josh, um, what are your thoughts? I was awesome. I, I loved, uh, you know, we didn't have, we had, you know, maybe like 10 people in here, but it felt like they had like 50 people in here with all the energy and head banging. Good crowd, good crowd. <laughs> well, thanks for bringing your energy, um, Andrew. What's the key to your sound? Uh, like tone or? Well, yes, all of the above. Uh, I guess. Uh, Tell us about your tone, first of all. OK, tone. Um, I don't know. It's kind of cliche. It's like it's based off like a 6505, like, you know, kind of like really classic, like American metal sound. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I don't think I'm like super original there. But uh, like my riffing style, like I like to be like really melodic, I guess. Um, I think that's kind of like. I think it's kind of the key, like if somebody wanted to like figure out like my sound, it's like I try to always be like catchy, like even though it's heavy, like have a catchy riff, you know, in the listener's head. Mm -hmm. So that's really my philosophy on like composing guitar riffs. You sounded great. Um, I was in the room, the control room, and uh, shout out to Jason, the man behind the sound back there. Um, he's incredible. We love Jason. And you guys need to go back and watch this show. Because it sounds really good and uh, beyond the lights, which are always top notch. But um, uh, OK, Josh, tell us about the sound um, as a band. Um, how would you guys or how would you describe your sound? Oh, we've tried so many times <laughs> that we don't really beyond, fit into like on labels. Beyond, right, well, know. we'll just move. Beyond. We're just, you know, a bit of thrash metal, a bit of heavy, a bit of stoner metal. We incorporate a lot of different types of metal. Yeah, I was going to say we incorporate a lot of different types of metal like. I'm really into a lot of the uh, like sludge, stoner doom kind of stuff, which isn't really what we play, but yeah. we try to like have that, like some of that. Me and, me and Kyle bring in the melodic death metal yeah, influence. Bring in, some bring in some thrash, some death metal. Yeah, another thing we do is we we work really well, um, like putting songs together. We spend a lot of time in composition, so we always want to refine those transitions, like and we yelling at each other, <laughs> plenty of that. And you know, Drew can talk yeah. about how he puts the sound together, but the truth is, you know, he has these occult rituals, and he just brings demons in we have a demon in our in our practice space too and it's infests our eq there. and just yeah. shuts off here and there but yeah no um we we try to make a sound that brings in some punk elements some bluesy some heavy groozy stuff um and just kind of wrap it all together in metal yeah. well um i must admit that when i heard you say you the first song you wrote was in 2020 and that was halfway through the show i'm like 
they've only been playing since that long, but you guys, uh, it shows in your performance um, that you've been putting the work in, uh, in the practices, in the hours. Um, so shout out to you guys and all your loved ones for putting up with all that. So um, <laughs> it sounded great. So, um, okay, so what about uh, the Boise sound? If you had to put a, a, a your finger on the Boise whatever metal scene or your place in it, what would you what would you say about the Boise metal sound? You want to go, Jay? Go. Well, uh, I'll say shout out to uh, Jeremy Tomlinson. He's uh, the owner of uh, CRLB, which is where our practice space is. And um, so there's a there's a lot of bands there, um, up and coming bands. And so I think we get we get kind of a feel there. Like we'll hear the bands practicing. I'm like, oh, you know, we like that. You know, that's cool. And um, I don't it rubs know. off, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I think it seems like it. Uh, there's a lot of like the psychedelic kind of uh like droney stoner kind of music uh like i hear a lot of that and i like that mm -hmm. and uh i don't know i hear a lot about that at that practice space but uh i don't know about other places if if, if that's just a phenomena there or the boise sound scene yeah uh yeah i would i would pretty much agree with uh with drew a lot of it's uh a lot of Indie more than anything, but yeah, you still hear a lot of that psychedelic sort of thing going with it, and uh, it's kind of the same with a lot of the shows that I've seen. Uh, even just like people posting up stories, uh, it's it's not a lot of uh, at least metal that seems like the most popular, but metal is still huge here as well, and we get a lot of uh, a lot of metalheads around here as well. And uh, I feel like our style is kind of it's like a mix between like Pantera and like all these other elements we mentioned. And there's a lot of that influence in everybody else around here too. So you, uh, so I feel like we fit in as well pretty pretty decently. Kyle, what do you have to say? Uh, it's, a, it's a great crowd. And then the people, everyone treats each other with such respect. And we love to, you know, play together and jam out. Um, it's There's a lot of great venues here. Um, just shout out to The Hive. Thank you guys so much for putting on a hell of a place for us to have shows. So we really, really appreciate that. So grateful. Woo! Yeah, thank you. Um, speaking of... Uh, who wants to take this question? What is your connection? How, uh, how'd you end up here? What's your Hive story, Josh? Uh, well, we got to the Hive because we were uh, we started recording an album with Jason. Bam. And uh, yeah, we got we got most of the way through that, and he was like, "Hey, you know, I'd love to have you guys uh, go play at the Hive. That would Thank be awesome." Yeah. We reached out, and that yeah. was that. Um, tell us a little bit about the upcoming, uh, well, what's, tell us a little bit, can you give us a, little, a glimpse into the studio work? What are you working on? Yeah, I mean, basically everything we just played in that live set, that's our first album. Um, it, everything's recorded, so we're very close to releasing it. It sounds awesome. Very good, very <laughs> Jason good. is a miracle worker with the recording. Yeah, uh, we love him. Th shout out to Jason Ringelstetter and the Tonic Room. Um, they're very good. Um, but if you can't afford him because he's worth every last penny, that he is totally he's not expensive, <laughs> but he's worth more than he charges. But um, the Hive's here for uh, resources, too. We have a recording space here, um, and there's been some legendary recording sessions back here in studio, too. So um, if, you, if your neighbors aren't down with, you know, jamming out, at all hours uh come rent some space here we're open till 10 p.m every night and um, we've got resources okay so lastly um maybe you guys don't know but you probably do the boise hive is all about um mental health resources and um saving lives and so um what do you guys do to other than music um to help tune up your your mental game and stay stay sharp and and happy and not polluted by the world. Yeah, cold showers are, are amazing in the morning. Uh, doing like you know five to seven minutes of cold shower, ice cold, and you can do affirmations with that too. Um, and and just focus on your goals and don't worry about what you can't control. And I think that makes a big difference. Uh, whatever happens to you, it can make you weaker or stronger. The choice is yours. Yeah, and uh, recently I started um, essentially adopting a more mindful uh mindset towards life and just meditating in the mornings and focusing on goals like he said focusing on sharpening my mind and uh basically trying to 
get past any anxieties or anything like that uh, through those rituals in the morning. <laughs> awesome. Uh, super short, but uh, for me, get good sleep, eat good, or at least decent exercise. Those three. <laughs> That's outstanding advice, man. Keep moving, huh? Keep moving. Um, exercise um, helps with that. Um, anyway, so we have resources here at the Boise High for those. Um, if you know anybody that's struggling, send them on down. We have counselors uh, free of charge. We've got resources. We've got referral programs. And more than anything, we have a community here of really cool people that, um, that are really good to connect with and um, will help you find your direction in, you know, the musical um, community around here. So, um, Cathacon, we appreciate you guys coming in and uh, sharing your your set with us and your energy and your your um, creations with us. Um, what's next for you guys? Uh, we're just gonna try to get this album finished and try to play more shows. Got any shows booked yet? Uh, nothing yet, I don't think. Right. Well, we're mostly just trying to get that album done first. Uh, get the album done. That's like our number one goal because we've been working on it for like eight months and. It's been a rough time, so we're just we're just trying to get that done, and then uh, yeah, maybe we'll look at doing some more shows and and uh, working on on some more material. Very good. Where can the throngs of fans find you guys? Where's Cathacon? Yep, we've got a YouTube channel, we've got Twitter, we've got Instagram. Uh, nothing much going on on social media at the moment. We got a couple of videos up on on the uh, YouTube of our first live show, uh, and I think that's everywhere we are. Very good. Very good. All right. Um, Again, thank you guys. Um, and if you know somebody that needs, um, wants to reach out to the Hive for our mental health resources, the email address um, at our counselor's desk is thrive at boisehive.org. And um, someone will get back to you. Call our phone number or come down here on Sundays and you'll probably run into me and we can jam. So, uh, Cathicon, let's hear it for Cathicon, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This has been a Boise Hive production um, of Live at the Hive, and we will see you here next time.